Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today I want to go over a book that was, I think, one of the first books I ever purchased on Wicca in particular. Um, there's been <laughs> a wee library purchased since, but one of the first ones that I ever picked up was this book called The Wicca Handbook by Eileen Holland. And this is the old version of it. There's a newer version of it that's a little more blasé, not as fancy. Because this one's all like, I've got all the symbols and everything. I like this version. And it's still in print. And, and I linked it in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Um, when I first started down my spiritual journey of trying to figure out what everything was, uh, this was probably one of the first books that I came across. And I actually picked it up in a... Borders bookstore many moons ago. Um, <laughs> for anyone who's been, wasn't really book shopping in the last 10 years, Borders probably doesn't mean anything to you. But pre Amazon, that was the place to get books. Everyone talks about Barnes and Nobles today, but honestly, I would have, I always preferred Borders. Just they had, they had a broader variety of books, music, and movies. And they really didn't have any limits on what they carried, which was nice. Barnes and Nobles has got there, but we're not discussing all of that. Anyway, <laughs> this was where I picked this one up. This book, as you can tell, I've got notes. It's got all sorts of scribbles throughout. Um, this one was probably one of the most influential ones on just kind of giving me idea, uh, specifically on Gerald Gardner's modern line, because that's kind of the path that Eileen follows. And in the edition that I have linked in the description, uh, she actually has Raymond Buckland do an in introduction to it, and he was part of Gerald Gardner's direct lineage. So it's a it's a good book, and it's got some amazing stuff in it. In the start of the book, it get, goes through the introduction, what is Wicca, um, things like that. Nothing too super stuff we've already talked about on here. But we go through in the index, there is becoming a witch what does it mean how about um, starting with magic starting your book of shadows collecting your tools which a lot of people will they have varying opinions on for me I feel like the tools should be a collection over the course of a year not just something that you'll pick up once in a while they need to have some special meaning behind them and there's there's ways to go about that we'll talk about that in other videos but there's for each of the four primary tools, uh, it's better to take your time and let them come to you. That way you know it's the right one. But we also have the elements, basics of casting spells, uh, making invocations, and then writing your own spells. And that's just basics. None of this stuff is super intensive. It's more like, so here's the, here's the idea, and this is a general idea of how you can get, do this. Then you go into the actual craft dealing with creativity and these are specific areas of interest so if you're looking to develop your creativity you can go straight to the book section on creativity you can go straight to the section on fertility health and healing law and justice love magic in general money and business protection psychic work there's a an adults only section and then we go to wisdom and when I say that I'm not saying erotic because it's not this is a, a textbook if we're gonna go there but there's a section that's for consenting adults um, we go through the correspondences and what they mean, basics of them, cardinal points, watchtowers, animal kingdom colors, um, letters, numbers, all the, fun all the fun stuff that seems like it's a lot. But I like the way she organizes it. So like when you're talking about Wicca, she goes through and gives you the uh, four or eight primary Sabbaths, four, and what they mean. You have the greater sabbaths which are your cross quarter days and that's in bulk february 2nd may 1st with beltane august 1st with lufnasa and october 31st with sawing then there's your lesser sabbaths which are the quarter festivals which is spring equinox or uh, um, austeri summer solstice letha autumn equinox maybon winter solstice yule so she gives you the basics and then she goes through and describes in a little detail what each one is and what the traditional dates are and if you've ever watched any of my videos on that 
I am a traditionalist, so I do not. I have a calendar right here <laughs> that varies the um, solstice based on the moon and the stars, and that's cool if you're going by that. But if you want to go traditional, there are specific days associated with each of these holidays. And when we're talking the lesser Sabbaths, the equinoxes and solstices, it's the 21st. March, June, uh, September, December. It's the 21st. Those are the cross, the, the quarter days. The cross quarters fall kind of outside of that a little bit. But those are, that's a traditional thing. So she goes through some of that. Um, they talk about craft names. And as we've discussed in the various people we've talked about, uh, craft names back in the day was a really good way to keep your an uh, an anonymity so that you could still be in a coven but not have, you know, Susie from accounting know that you were in a coven <laughs> if a name happened to be released because when you were in within the group, you were referenced by this other name altogether. And there is some power that goes along with your name changing like that, so it's not just one aspect of just oh I have this other name it's there's some there's some power associations with it as well then it talks she goes into talking about different f versions of astrology and mythology if you haven't figured that part out yet myth plays a huge role in modern day Wicca and uh, witchcraft and then you got to talk about your dreams uh, dealing with your dark side your shadow self and she doesn't explain she doesn't specifically state, words are difficult today, um, how to go about doing that because the shadow is a unique one. This is a general textbook, so to speak. Um, she talks about, uh, we all have a dark side that we have to confront before we can trust ourselves with magic. 100% agree. You can't just go wandering out as, I'm a white witch, if you've never dealt with your dark side because it's going to flare up and it's always going to bite you in the rear end. Um, and this is where you have to get into complete honesty. You have to deal with your inner demons. And for her, that would be negative impulses, aggression, jealousy, addiction, envy, depression, um, or compulsions that you feel very strong towards. Compulsion, it can be weird because it looks like you're being compelled towards something good. But if you don't have control, that's your shadow. That That's just simple. Um, and everyone's a little bit different and she talks about how she uses poetry and journaling to purge hers and you might be surprised how effective journaling and writing is on getting that crap out of your head just as something to think about um and then i because of the way i deal with some of these texty books there's notes all over the place or something underlined or an arrow to it um for example, never participate in Satanism, black magic, demonology, blood sacrifices, or anything that is blatantly negative, and avoid, avoid books by those who practice or advocate such magic. Develop your psychic radar so that alarm bells go off when the evil energy is near you. In Wicca, confronting your shadow is not a demonic act. It's not dealing that, it's not that aspect. And that's why she says, do not think that Wicca has anything to do with that because it it really doesn't there's no you're dealing with the darkness within you which is kind of your innate animalistic self the self that you don't have control over and it's because you need to gain control over that part because humankind is to conquer but not abuse the natural world and when I say that, people tend to get really testy. I do not mean, um, you know, mowing down the forests. But what I do say is selectively working with it. There's a whole bunch of misinformation out there about stuff like that, and we won't get into all that right now. But there are ways to still do, uh, like, timber work without clear cutting. There are ways to ethically use hunting seasons and not annihilate entire sections and that's the stuff when you're talking about Wicca and a lot of modern day Wiccans do not agree with this but there's an ethic to how it works we are not submissive to those animalistic needs we are supposed to find ways to understand and bring them into a reign at least because your shadow is literally the darkest aspects of you breaking that down simpler it's the untamed or the uncontrolled emotional state well 
figure out a way to work through that. And we'll talk more about shadows later because that gets in, that's a whole different check uh, <laughs> list of nightmares. Um, but then you talk about sacred spaces, how to develop them, how to clear space to make it more sacred. She talks about how you can build your uh, grimoires, how she's done hers, and how she breaks hers down. And I do like this because she talks about her personal one. She has it set up. Yeah, you know, correspondence were important to me from the start because I knew I would need to write my own spells. I organized them alphabetically. Of course, she has a Taurus aspect here, um, and she broke it apart into sections. And this is on in this version. It's on page 32 correspondence and then what those correspondence would be for a specific thing um, materia the things that you would need to perform such spell and then the actual type of spell and the incantation and that's where you get into like the Wiccan Reed talks about um, saying everything with a rhyme because it tends to trigger that part of the brain that manifests faster then she goes into the different tools the basic four uh, the athame the wand, the pentacle, and the chalice, but she also adds in, um, and a lot of these in the correspondent or in the tool section, these are things that you would do if you were in a bigger ceremonial state. If you're just by yourself working, you need an athame, a wand, a chalice, and a pentacle. That That's what you need, because that's earth, air, fire, and water that brings all of them to the table. But if you're doing it in a bigger space, you could have a sword, you could have a cauldron, a sensor, a broom with a broomstick. Um, there's a lot of traditions that use bells with and bowls, necklaces and cords, and a lot of this gets into um, much more of the ritualistic coven work, not just solitary. Um, scourges, if you go into that. There was an aspect of gardener's work that went that direction, and it's not for everybody, and it's not my thing. Uh, then you can get into the elements and how different elements work for different purposes. Um, earth works for money, rock, and fertility. Um, then you've got air, and f with the way she has air, and I this is <laughs> over the years I have expanded this, but for her version, air is for psychic work only. But then she gives you a list of things you can work with what planet, the times of day, the seasons, the qualities, direction, um, specific jewels or gems, uh, the various tools that you associate with the elements, um, zodiacs, colors, incenses, symbols, plants, animals, the rules. In other words, what does air rule over? Uh, invocations. Who are you calling upon to work with air? Uh, gods, goddesses, other beings, wind spells, which those are interesting. Uh, then you get into fire, which is purification, uh, <laughs> amorous, magic, uh, healing, which is destroying disease, which is what a fever will do, uh, candle magic, and hearth magic. Water is for healing, love spells, purification, psychic work, fertility, weather magic. Water is, when it comes to weather, you can use air with it as well, but for the most part, when you're working any form of uh, uh <laughs> whether magic or spells you're generally using some aspect of water drawing it out bringing it in balancing it that's what water is for kind of a fun way of looking at things uh, then she gets into the actual casting and this is where you get into working with magic circles uh, what ma minor and major magic is or I don't know if she fully gets it I can't remember <laughs> if she gets into fully what high and low means either but what are you doing what kind of spells do you need what kind of supplies are you looking for how are you arranging your altar what direction are you facing your altar all things that tie into it uh, timing the uh, materials you need herbs and such formal which is more coven based versus informal a lot of like lighting a candle for someone who's sick that's an informal version of magic there's practical versions she talks about and then and this is I think to me especially if you're on your own you're solitary and you're building your own practice this next section which starts on 62 which is making invocations this is to me one of the more important ones and this was one of the ones that was very critical when I first started my spiritual journey um, because I'm not officially a Wiccan <laughs> my, my spiritual practice is all over the place but 
it's how you call upon the divine. So she gives you a basic invocation here. Oh, deity, hail, secondary deity. I invoke what energy you're looking for. Um, I call upon a planetary energy. Uh, these are all different ways you can get a, get the attention of the spirit world. Um, you can do those are simple basic ones. There can be exceptionally complicated where you have this elaborate poem, which some of them are so beautiful. I'm not even like at that point I'm not reading it for that purpose. I'm reading it because it's pretty, or it's lyrical or whatever. Um, you can do invo uh, invocations, which is calling something in. Evocations is calling it to physical manifestation. Um, you can do thanksgivings like that and praises, which are highly recommended. Um, she even then kind of breaks down, like there's a section in here where she goes, these are Egyptian versions that she uses in her practice. And that's pretty cool. Goes through how to write them, how to create, how to build. Then she gives you examples of uh, spell to attract the attention of one you desire. Uh, how to close your spells when you're finished because that is kind of an important thing that not everyone talks about how to ground stuff then she gets into the sections that are breaking down like correspondences for creativity then it gives you all of the lists of who to call on how to do it art forms deities uh, inspirations what are you looking for are you looking for creative hairstyling she actually has a section on this there's a section for poetry, there's a section for tattooing, deities and such, I think it's just an, in, yeah, just a deity for that one. There's a section for woodworking, there's music, she goes into fertility, how to do, build fertility charms, who to call on, and when they say correspondence, these are supplies, deities, uh, ritual acts, or thought patterns, mantras, things like that, that you would use to develop your own rituals how to heal yourself and healing other people, major versus minor healing. She gives you some examples of what those would be. This thing is so marked up. I forgot how much I note in this. Um, then it goes through law and justice. And <laughs> she gets on a little soapbox. And in some ways, I can't argue. But then there's other ways I'm like, eh. um, talking about how you're not supposed to wear um, Wiccan objects in schools, which, like I said, you sh probably shouldn't. Just Wicca wasn't meant to be drug out in public like that. It was meant to be a bit more personal. And so doing things like that, you're kind of asking for the attention. If you're okay with that, fine. But and, th and this is one of those things where I don't quite agree with her on it. Let kids make their own decisions. You as a teacher or as an adult in the classroom should not be talking about any of it. It should be there to learn reading, writing, arithmetic. How do we figure these things out? How to, th how to think, not what to think. When you start bringing a lot of that stuff in, you're kind of stirring the pot a little bit. Not always, but you can. And that's why she says it's that she would prefer to just be open to wear, which is fine. But if you're going to allow that, then you also have to allow the other stuff too. It's one of those gray areas. We'll just call it that. <laughs> um, and then... She, is like, she does talk about this. Wicca seeks no converts, engages in no proselytizing, and that is hugely important. And it's interesting because even though Wicca doesn't do that, the numbers of people who come to covens, Alexandrian, Gardenian, or the rest of the mainstream covens, grows because there is a craving for a spiritual connection. And that's kind of the thing that she talks about in a lot of this stuff. Let's hop ahead here and get out of the legal stuff general um, magic Im uh, correspondences there's even a little section here on immortality and she footnotes it there's no physical immortality the best an immortality spell can do is give your name your line or your work greater longevity okay we can work with that um, I had to note that because I thought it was fun then we've got transformation magic and that can be a lot of different things the money and business section there's sec a section on protection um, basic, when I say basic, uh, this is a section on protection. This, whoops, <laughs> I have too many papers in this thing. Literally, this is one of my oldest and most used uh, resources. Uh, this entire page here is just for plants and goddesses <laughs> for protection. 
So this is not a small work by any stretch. Um, we move into psychic work, what you, what it means, how to do it. It doesn't break down specifics for each Claire because everyone's going to develop differently. This is basics to help help you develop your abilities. There's a section for astral projection, for general psychic work, dreams, um, energy work, trance work, visions. And the one caveat I'll make with all of that, be careful what you wish for. Because it might sound cool, but when you actually start to delve into it, <laughs> don't force it. Let it come to you naturally. And that's the reason it's... She, I think she left that one general for a reason. Um, then there's the more grown-up version. Then we get into the directions. North, south, east, west. What each of them mean. What elements are associated. Seasons. Time of day. Time plays a big role in her version of it. And so does the Zodiac. <laughs> Not my strong point. Um, then she talks about the planets. There's even like magic squares. How to use the magic squares. What incenses. What deities. Um, various superstitions with uh, about them moon phases this like i said this book is exceptionally well written and very full of information then you get into the animals and what different parts of different animals like there's a section here on cattle and then it breaks it down into which country not all of them but a lot of them like there's a celtic version there is um, mostly druids in this section but it talks about the, like different fluids that were used from the animals Sometimes you used that, sometimes you didn't. Like white bulls are very powerful symbols. Um, different cows associated with different religions, Egyptian Book of the Dead, Hinduism, um, all sorts of fun stuff. And I'm being kind of generic because I don't want to read the work because reasons. Um, but she even goes into like marine life and lizards, insects, which I thought was pretty funny. She had an, a, a specific section for just the bugs. Um, different birds, what they mean. And then let's hop out of the animals. Then we get into our rocks and gemstones, how to use them, the risks of different ones. Like she even talks about asbestos, no longer used in magic because of its highly carcinogenic properties. Uh, then talks about bloodstone, and it's which is a form of chalcedony. Uh, tells you what they should look like emerald a bright green precious stone a variety of barrel and then it goes into basically how it's collected how you use it um, different signs if something should happen like if you have an emerald necklace and the emerald falls out of the setting but the rest of the stones stay that generally means that the emerald is taking a hit for you because emeralds tend to be your personal health and so if you have one that cracks or falls out of a setting, that's because it's taking the hit. Do not pick that thing up. Do, you can take it home with you, but you're not going to wear it again because it's already taken a hit. The next one, it won't defend you on. Um, and so there's things like that. What days to wear emerald if you're going to pick a day of the week to wear it. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. Uh, and then we hop back here and we go through the numbers. You can use numbers as dots. You can write the numbers, say different time ways to count or chant something numbers are associated different deities to a certain extent not super on that one and then in the end back it's just a glossary of terms so you can <laughs> look it up better she has a section in the back that is specific to the spells which like ancient Egyptian spells um, basic other spells and where you can find them honestly if you are really starting down the path and you really want to understand more solitary or coven uh, this is a great resource it has a ton of correspondence in it it's very broad ranging she writes mostly from her own experience but there's a lot of stuff that she talks about how she was taught these things doesn't always use them all um, I don't have a lot of her work she has several books out there this is the one that I will say I do go back to a lot um, until I found another writer and I tend to use her stuff as well but as far as basics generals um, kind of an all-in-one type book this book is almost a book of shadows in itself because of the information that's in it um, highly recommend if you're interested but with that I'll let you go um, 
If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video, and comment down below if you've ever read her work or if you've, I think she's still alive, um, if you've ever met her or you happen to be around one of her covens, which would be pretty cool too. Otherwise, I will talk to you in a future video and have a great rest of your week.